All right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to look at <coughs> um, activity 7.1, which is dimensioning standards. Uh, so it's very important to understand the proper way to put dimensions on part drawings because this is how other engineers and other people, when you do a presentation, understand what your part is. Also, you need to be able to send these parts uh, to a manufacturer so that they can build them and create them properly, usually in massive quantities. So dimensioning standards. In order for the drawings to be dimensioned so that all people can understand them, we need to follow standards. There are some organizations here um, that create the standards. You have ANSI, ISO, MIL, DOD, DIN, JIS, and CEN. So we'll get into here in a minute what those letters and what those acronyms stand for. So ANSI is the American National Standards Institute. This creates the engineering standards for North America. So if you're going to do business in the United States, Canada, Mexico, Caribbean, etc., you're going to use ANSI. ISO is the international standard. This is a worldwide organization that creates standards with approximately 100 participating countries. So when countries in the United States or businesses in the United States go overseas, then they use these ISO standards. So we'll look at a few of these as we go along. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, let's see. Here, we'll just start this from the beginning and we'll get back to where we need to be. Okay, so also the United States military develops standards, uh, Department of Defense and a military standard. Um, it's important for defense and the military to have separate standards because a lot of times the things that the military creates are classified documents so they don't want open access to those particular um, part drawings. And then there's stuff for Germany, Jap Japan, Europe, etc. All right, so we have a few dimension components. We have the dimension text, which is the number that's associated with the dimension. We have the dimension line that identifies the span of a particular dimension and arrowheads at the end. Then we also have extension lines. So these four together um, make up a dimension. So text guidelines. If the dimension text will not fit between the extension lines, it could be placed outside of them. So we move the one inch over to the left to be put outside of those particular dimensions. Okay, dimension text is placed in the middle of the line, horizontally, as shown here, and vertically. So we want the number directly in the middle both ways. So dimensions are represented on a drawing. Unidirectional means all that the dimensions are read in the same direction. The aligned dimensions means the dimensions are read in alignment with dimension lines or side of the part. Some of these read horizontally and others read vertically. So we'll show you some examples of this here going forward. So unidirectional dimensions, everything reads across. Um, and they can be read from the bottom of the drawing sheet. Aligned dimensions, all right, so if the dimension is horizontal, the numbers appear horizontal. If the dimension is vertical, the lines appear vertical. So we really want to dimension two classifications. We want to have the size, so the specific size of a feature, for example, 1.83 inches. Um, but sometimes we also need location to identify the proximity of a feature to another feature within the object. So here, the 0.71 says that this dot or this hole is 0.71 inches away from the edge. Or 
in this case, 0.61 inches down from the top. So you always need size and location of your dimension features. So chain dimensioning, this is pretty common, okay? Chain dimensioning feature across the entire part, but the inaccuracies can accumulate. So this is not necessarily the preferred method. The preferred method is, is that you put in an overall dimension and put in the ones that you need except for one that makes a difference. So here, overall is one and a half. So each stair step is 0.5, but it's assumed that the difference here, because 0.5 and 0.5 equals one, and the overall is one and a half, this dimension right here has to be 0.5. Um, this will eliminate or limit manufacturing inaccuracies, which is something you don't want. So that's why it's preferable. Datum dimension. From a single port of origin called a datum, this is reduces deviations because each size and location is referenced to a single point. So this is what we're most familiar with that we've done in the past. So here, Notice that all of the dimensions start from the left side, and then here all of the dimensions start from the bottom. So you have 0.5, 1, and then 1 and a half. Here we have 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and then 0 0.75. So it's like they go up all from a single origin or the datum of the part. So we have various dimensioning symbols that you need to be aware of. The degree symbol, reference symbol is a parenthesis, diameter, you've seen this before, which is a circle with a line through it, R, you've also seen that before, which is a radius, counter bore, counter sink, depth, these are all whole symbols, which we'll get to as we go along plus minus center line square, etc. So this slide you're gonna to need to come back to quite a bit as you're dimensioning things. An angle can be done a number of ways. You can have a coordinate method that specifies the two location distances of the angle. So here you have the first part of the angle at 0 0.88 across the top second part of the angle at 0 0.5 along the side. You can also have a dimension using the angular method by specifying one location. So here, 0 0.88 would be the vertice, vertex of the angle. And then we say it's at a 30 degree angle from this horizontal down to here. So sometimes we have some chamfers. Okay, two options for 45 degree chamfers. One, you can say 45 degrees times 0 0.125, or you can say 0.125 times 0.125. Okay, external chamfers other than 45 degrees will specify the distance and then specify an angle for that. If they are internal, we'll give the overall width and then an angle for these as well. Again, you're going to have to refer back to this slide and this presentation as you go through the activity. Arcs and circles, dimension in views that show the arcs and circles. We have a leader. Sometimes you have a center mark. Circles should have a center mark. Dimension with the leader to identify the diameter. So um, a center mark is just a cross, as you can see right here. Capital R indicates a radius. Small arcs do not need center marks. So we'll stop there and we'll pick it up um, with our next part two of our dimensioning presentation.